So when I first realized that mint was a unhealthy food for consumption for your reproductive health, uh, it actually made me a bit sad. And that's because um, mint is an undeniably tasty flavor. Um, so, you know, psychologically also, it's very calming and relaxing to consume something like mint tea, for example. But as I'm gonna show to you today, uh, I'm gonna demonstrate, to, you know, show some of this research that, that I have on mint. Um, according to the peer-reviewed research, it's actually quite bad for your body, especially if you define health as being in a hormonal balance and having uh, no micronutrient deficiencies. So I really believe that we must respect nature. Not everything in nature is fit for human consumption. You know, the anti-nutrient and anti-reproductive endocrine disrupting effects of many plants must be respected the same way the healing effects of other plants should be respected. Nature is cyclical. Certain things in nature destroy, while other things restore. And one of my chief aims with this channel is to bring awareness to this truth and to help all of us learn to respect nature more than we currently do. For some reason, we humans are arrogant enough to think that we are entitled to consume any sort of natural thing without consequences. The law of cause and effect is unerring. Don't stay blind. It's not as healthy as you think. In fact, it's not healthy at all. Let me show you this. Now, true health in the human body is actually, it's characterized by two things. And uh, if you disagree with this, then so be it. Uh, but it's gonna be hard to disagree with this because this is just foundationally true. So the first thing for the body to uh, you know, be characterized as extremely healthy it, that's required is actually just micronutrient, um, you know, no micronutrient deficiencies. You have to be able to correct all the micronutrient deficiencies because these vitamins and minerals are actually the raw material that your body needs uh, to function properly you know, for all metabolism and all um, hormonal health. And the second thing that brings us to is the hormonal health. Your body must be in a state of hormonal balance to actually truly be healthy. Now there are two classes of hormones. There's protect protective hormones and there's stress hormones. Now when the protective hormones are at a nice healthy level and stress hormones are at a low level, uh, what you find is the body is just naturally healthy in that sense. But when it's reversed, when the stress hormones are high, the protective hormones are low, you start to get into all sorts of problems, diseases, uh, they manifest and uh, you start to have all sorts of reproductive and thyroid issues as well. And that's one of the chief factors of the fact that you know, hypothyroidism is, is the, a massive wide scale epidemic right now and reproductive function problems are also a massive epidemic right now It's because nobody's paying attention to this stuff. So if you disagree on a foundational level with this, um, then, you know, that's your we just have differing uh, points of view on what health truly is. But you have to realize if you disagree with that, what you're saying is that you think that the body is it doesn't need the proper amounts of vitamins and minerals to be healthy. And you're, think, you're saying that you think that the body doesn't need to be in a state of hormonal balance, that it should have low reproductive hormones and high stress hormones. Uh, you know, if you think that, good luck. But if you agree with me, if you agree that you need the right amount of vitamins and minerals for your body to function properly and they need to be absorbed and actually be able to be used in the body, uh, if you agree with that and then you agree that your body needs to be in a state of hormonal balance with low stress hormones and high healthy protective hormones and reproductive hormones like thyroid and, and testosterone levels and that sort of thing, then uh, you and I will see eye to eye on exactly what is healthy and what is not healthy. And within this framework, unfortunately, uh, like I said, it made me a bit sad when I realized this, mint is not healthy for the body. When it comes to the research around mint consumption, it's actually pretty obvious that mint in various forms actually has some pretty negative effects on the body from anti-reproductive effects 
to liver damage. Now, right now, I'm going to show you the research around those effects. Then, since I realize a lot of this information can be a bit disturbing to people's habits and way of thinking, I'm going to provide uh, I'm going to provide you with some healthy alternatives that you can use in terms of common products that typically have mint that you probably have in your house right now, like toothpaste, mouthwash, and breath fresheners. I don't want to leave anyone hanging here. So this study right here shows an increase in FSH and LH, uh, but an overall decrease in testosterone levels uh, when consuming mint. Now, logically, the increase in LH and FSH would be uh, to actually overcompensate for the fact that there's less circulating testosterone um, in the system. The LH and FSH are what they're what known as uh, gonadotropins, and the gonadotropins signal to the body to actually produce more T levels. So what happens is what it looks like, according to this study, when the mint is consumed, it lowers circulating testosterone levels. So this study shows oxidative stress to the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, leading to a decreased production of FSH and LH. Uh, the hypothalamus signals to the pituitary gland to produce the, the gonadotropins, um, which down the road made less testosterone as well. So um, the consumption of mint not only lowers circulating testosterone levels, it actually lowers the production of testosterone levels. There probably is an overcompensating period, uh, and then it actually starts to affect the hypothalamus signaling. So this study states that high doses of the mint extract may have an impact on male fertility in rats. This study right here shows that spearmint tea has a significant decreasing effect on total free testosterone in women and an increasing effect on LH and estradiol. So it's, it's like the, the, the compensatory mechanism is pretty obvious. Um, so this shows a significant reduction in total and free testosterone and increased FSH and LH in women with hirsutism and PCOS. So again, the compensatory response in action. Lower circulating amounts of these androgens and uh, the brain is trying to catch up and increase the amount. At a certain point that it doesn't continue to work because the hypothalamus gets affected and slows production down. So the study shows a dose-dependent response to lipid peroxidation in the liver and liver damage when using different forms of mints on, rat, on rats. Uh, and this study actually literally says that spearmint has an inhibiting effect on testosterone and increasing FSH in ovarian tissue. Well, this study shows two species of mint teas inhibited iron absorption in rats, so it's causing you know, new, micronutrient deficiencies. Now, this study showed an increase um, in melondaldehyde in female rats, concluding that the species of mint significantly increases lipid peroxidation in the liver and uterine damage. Now, this study showed um, that it caused infertility in male rats and that the sperm tails of these rats actually were coiled up, which is really interesting. Um, this study right here showed that they used a species of mint tea um, to actually cause menstrual bleeding in women. Interesting. In this study, they actually used mint oil um, to terminate pregnancy. That's freaking scary. Holy shit. Now, this study used a species of mint to cause an eruption of pregnancy again. And then during pregnancy, they caused an increase in estrogenic effect of estradiol. Now, this study right here showed that the species of mint uh, precoitally, so precoitally basically means like right before sex, significantly decreased uterine weight. And they think that the decre by decreasing glycogen levels in the uterus, um, it also increased the amount of cholesterol in the uterus in the female rat. So it, it had some kind of wonky effect on the uterus. This showed that uh, there was a significant increase in FSH, LH again, estrogen and progesterone in female rats with the species of mint. So there's, it's like this milieu of compensatory responses with um, like shutdown responses. It's really strange when you consume the mint. Uh, the conclusion on this one wasn't exactly clear, uh, but they did see a uh, increase in galactagog activity in the female rats. You know, this one, they were using it to uh, kind of manipulate menstrual cycles in teenage girls. Uh, this one right here, they showed that mint uh, as an anesthetic in 1897, um, was caught basically causing a stress response uh, versus clove oil they compared the two it's pretty old and this one broiler chickens had a short-term increase in weight gain um, when supplementing with peppermint and the end weights though were the same uh, between the peppermint and other substances that's just kind of an interesting thing to note if you kind of have like the short-term weight gain you don't know what it's from if you consume a lot of mint it might be from that uh, this one uh, basically basically proved that peppermint in, uh, consumption caused an increase in oxidative stress and inflammatory response in the body. You know, this one they're they're just talking about in this article basically how a lot of uh, mint consumption can lead to miscarriage during pregnancy. 
Uh, this shows that mint basically has a reversible anti-fertility effect on male rats. So we're seeing a lot of different patterns here. We're seeing a lot of like hormonal confusion, you know, from from mint. Um, this one showed that when administered the mint leaf extract, um, it basically had basically had um, no performance issues uh, for these rats. Like they had no libido issues that were observed. However, they were sterile after mating. So it sterilized rats, so it's freaking scary. This study right here showed lung damage after the injection of peppermint oil. This one showed that peppermint oil induced mutations uh, independent of the dosage. So just in general, it caused mutations. This one right here showed that um, the mint mixed with some other chemicals was very in effective insecticide. Hmm. So this study showed that large amounts of uh, pulagone are present in peppermint oil extract. This one states that the uh, contact with peppermint oil causes uh, intraoral diseases and disorders, which is strange because they put it in every type of toothpaste and mouthwash that you think of. So this one uh, states significant adverse effects of mint that um, you are linked to specifically peppermint. So this is actually a case report on an overdose of pep peppermint oil. So that's interesting that in this, in this discussion section of this, this case study, they stated that peppermint has been known to have hepatotoxic, nephrotoxic um, uh, presence, basically, which means it's bad for your kidney, essentially. Um, so that's when people have an overdose of like kidney failure. So this one goes in depth on pulagone and the effects of it. And the biggest effect is the possible carcinog carcinogenic effect on humans and, um, uh, um, you know, like a relation to cancer in, in mice and rats. So uh, that's kind of scary. A compound in mint can potentially be carcinogenic. So this study right here showed a synergistic effect of rosmarinic acid and rapamycin having immunosuppressive effects. So basically shutting down the immune system, uh, which is only good for transplants, trying not to reject organs, essentially. So it's like the compounds that were common in mint were shutting down the immune system. They use that in medical you know, situations to try and, uh, especially like surgeries and organ transplants and that sort of thing. But... I mean, it's kind of scary if they're using that and they know all about it. Like, um, for you to be drinking this stuff as like a mint tea or something like that, it's not not very healthy. So this one shows the effects of the expression of estrogen receptors and androgens in uh, ovarian tissue. Um, this one sh showed that uh, the pulagone um, caused a lower uh, follicle distribution, lower estradiol levels in ovarian tissue. This shows a significant reduction in total and free testosterone when consuming mint. So um, in this section, actually, I, I'm going to show you a couple, uh, just some brands, you know, some stuff. Here we've got some toothpastes, uh, some fluoride-free toothpastes that also don't have mint in them. And what I'll do is I'll link to these in the uh, description section of this YouTube video so you can check them out. Um, we also have some mouthwash options here, and you can find those there. Uh, some floss, a couple dental floss options. Uh, we got toothpicks for those of you. Actually, these tea tree therapy cinnamon toothpicks are pretty, pretty dope. And then we've got some, you know, different types of breath fresheners, whether it's like gum or that sort of thing, some mints. Uh, but they're, they're using uh, cinnamon instead of, uh, instead of mint. And cinnamon is actually pretty awesome for a lot of different reasons. So there you have it. That is mint. Uh, you might be confused. And if you're confused about some of this stuff, it's like, you know, a lot of it seems like, like a lot of our life is like waking up to some, you know, certain lies that we've been told our whole life about this is healthy or that's healthy. Um, in the case of mint, it's just kind of a tasty food. I don't think a lot of people would consider it healthy, but they, or, or unhealthy, they just consider it that it tastes good. Um, if you're confused about exactly what you should eat for optimal health, I actually put together this framework based on the idea that your body needs to be in hormonal balance and needs to have um, you know, the proper micronutrient levels. And I made a tool, I made a quiz at thethermodiet.com slash quiz that you can go through and I'm gonna help uh, to identify exactly which organ in your body needs to be optimized because a lot of us have these failing organs that are trying to overcompensate for our deficiencies and imbalances. And uh, these are the liver, the thyroid, and the pituitary. So if you identify your, your body type, what it's gonna do, the quiz is gonna ask you a couple unorthodox questions that I guarantee you haven't heard before, um, where you're gonna get put into this, this track that's gonna teach you how, let's say you're a liver body type, your liver needs optimizing for your, for your health to come back into true health. I'm gonna show you the foods you should eat, the way you should eat, 
um, you know, what you should focus on to actually optimize that. So that's over at thethermodiet.com slash quiz. You can go check it out. If you like this video, subscribe and share with some friends. I mean, who, what if your friends that you know in your mind, need, you know, they need to know about this information Just share it with them. Um, I greatly appreciate that. Thanks for your support on the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Excess estrogens and other endocrine disruptors, uh, rancid carcinogenic toxins, and powerful mineral chelators that actually strip vitamins and minerals out of your body 